Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, March 24th, 2014, and here are our top stories. Tonight, UK hospitals find a better use for unborn children rather than let them live to become adults. Then, Mexican drug cartels made recruits eat children's hearts in initiation rites. And a Homeland Security exercise targets free Americans against socialist tyranny. All this and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, abortion has long been called a holocaust because of the number of children that have died since Roe v. Wade. 54 million. But now children are literally being passed through the furnace in order to fuel hospitals in the UK. Aborted babies are being burned to power hospitals in the UK. Ten NHS trusts, that's their government health care system, have admitted burning fetal remains alongside other rubbish, while two others use the bodies in waste-to-energy plants, which regenerate plant power for heat. Now, this is coming from the UK Telegraph. They said that over 15,000 babies have been used this way. Is it really any surprise? If you're going to have a situation where you've got an abortionist who is chopping the baby up into pieces, or as they pointed out here in Houston, you had staff workers at an abortion clinic talking about how the doctor was twisting heads off the babies. Is it any wonder that they would treat them with this kind of disrespect? But it's not just that. We see in comments from Twitter and on the posts, on the articles, we see that people are pointing, pushing back and saying, what's wrong with this? Look at these comments. In a world of too much waste, surely it's efficient and effective. Another one says, if the unwanted remains can be used for a worthwhile purpose like heat generation, then they should be. That's the essence of sustain sustainability. Unwanted medical waste. I don't get what the problem is. It's recycling. It's more economical than saying using nuclear power or electricity. And then this one sums it all up. Once people decide that unborn children are less than human, what do you expect? Exactly right. We literally see children being passed through the fire, as the Bible put it. They're being sacrificed on the altar of efficiency and prosperity. That's what's really going on here. Is this the kind of society that you want to live in? Any kind of society that would do this to its children will do it to its senior citizens. It will do it to its dissidents. And that kind of society will also eventually turn on its police, on its army, on its prison guards, on the quislings and the collaborators who make that possible. This is nothing but a suicide cult. But in the meantime, you can be applauded by the system. Look at this report from TPNN.com. They say that Nancy Pelosi is going to accept an award that's going to honor her in the name of the black-hating eugenicist Margaret Sanger. And here's this quote that they have in the article from Margaret Sanger. We should hire three or four colored ministers, preferably with social service backgrounds and engaging personalities. The most successful educational approach to the Negro is through this kind of appeal. We don't want the word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. And the minister is the one who can straighten out that idea if it ever occurs to any of them. And so we see possibly, as they point out in this article, formerly pro-life reverends like Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson, Quislings in the concentration camp and the eugenicists. But we see that this award is being put out, of course, by Planned Parenthood is giving this award to Nancy Pelosi. The Margaret Sanger Award. You know, it's very sad to see Democrats, the Democrat Party, taking this as one of its fundamental planks of its party. This is not a civil liberties issue. The Libertarian Party needs to understand this as well. This is not civil liberties. Why aren't the Democrats so concerned about the NSA, about the surveillance state? No, they're not concerned about civil liberties, and this isn't civil liberties. This is genocide. This is eugenics. This is infanticide. It is not civil liberties. If you think this is something that is going to happen in the future, that the government is going to turn on its citizens, ruthlessly kill them for no reason at all, that's not the case. It's happening now. It's happening today. It's happening just this last weekend in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Look at this report from Alex Jones. Do it. Get on the ground! Get on the ground now! Get on the ground! James M. Boyd is dead. His crime? Sleeping behind a line of boulders 
at a state park outside Albuquerque, New Mexico. A group of heavily armed police with a German Shepherd attack dog came upon him and ordered him to walk down the hill. When he began to come down the hill, and we're going to go through the unedited footage, they release the police dog on him, throw a flashbang grenade at him, he turns to run, pulls something out of his pockets, and they shoot him in the back. Get on the ground! Get on the ground now! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Now we pause the video there where the suspect, James Boyd, appears to be turning away from officers. And now, that's all the public has seen up until that point. The mainstream media stops the video right there when they pull the trigger and shoot him in the back. What comes next is the true horror. They allow the dog to chew and continue to bite on him. They step on his arms. They shoot him more with the beanbag guns, and it looks like they shoot him with a real firearm at least one more time. They then handcuff his dead body and hyperventilate acting like they're scared of him, and so it's okay what they've done. When you look at this in context, it's bad enough, but when you see all the other things they've done in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and gotten away with, like pepper spraying a woman's genitalia to, quote, punish her, or giving a man eight anal probes and enemas looking for illegal drugs they never found from a routine traffic stop you realize what a dangerous place Albuquerque is to visit. And then you find out there is a long train of very suspicious cases of police killing people and calling it suicide in Albuquerque and the surrounding counties. You realize this is another one of these boss hog kingdoms where the police know they're above the law. Watching the footage is extremely disturbing, and we're going to play it all unedited from end to end for you right now. This was shot from a gun camera that one of the police officers has. And when you see this man talking to them calmly, and seconds later he's dead, you realize how dangerous this militarization of police has become. The New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, they've all reported now on what I began warning you about 19 years ago the federalization and the militarization of police under the RAND Corporation National Stability Police Force Plan, which is designed to turn our country into a martial law system. If you were down at a bar or a, a bus stop, I have the right to kill you right now because you're trying to take me over. Don't get stupid with me. We're not going to get stupid. You said we were walking out of here, now you're, you're bringing up assault and everybody's going to get hurt again? All right, don't change up your agreement. I'm going to try to walk with you. All right. Love folks, I'll try to arm you. If you were, I can keep you safe. All right? Don't worry about safety. I'm not a fucking murderer. All right? I'll try. I'll try to harm you. I'll try to harm you. All right? Do it. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground now! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Don't make fun of Moving up. Get your hands up. Still got the knives in his hand. Still got the knives in his hand. Still got the knives in his hand. Stepping up behind you. Keep moving. Don't hurt me. His hands Get still, still armed. Yep. Get, Get your hands out. Get Drop your hands up. Bring back. Right behind you. Put your hands out to your side and drop the knife. Hands out to your side. Bean bag, bean bag. Drop the knife. Drop the knife. Drop the knife. You got the knife. Negative effect. Does my guard on him? Uh, I can get him on him. Yeah, I don't want that knife in his head. Alright, he's good. Somebody step on that right hand real hard. He's got a knife in each hand. Knife in each hand. Knife in each hand. Rex, low. I think you're around. I got left.
Alright. I'm gonna switch you. Alright. Good? You got lethal right there? Yes. I have lethal. Push it right in. Follow. Oh. Yeah. Where's that knife? It's further away from you. I didn't see where the other one went. Where'd the first knife go? Oh. Right. Where'd the first, so the first knife's up there. Yeah. Okay. Wow. You need another set of cups? Yeah, we're good, Bill. We're rolling over, right? Okay. Can you guys check that, make sure nobody else Yep, got it. I'm with you. Go to my right. I'm good here. Here. Our country is converting to tyranny. The police are being given the power of judge, jury, and executioner. We've seen cases where the police shoot the young black man in the back while he's handcuffed for no reason. The bullet bounces back up into his heart, shooting him twice. Face down. Then, after what appears to be a struggle, a BART officer puts his knee to Grant's neck and head, and another officer steps back, draws his gun, and fires it once into Grant's back. His friends. And we see so many other cases where the police execute people. We know in the military, most people join because of family or because of patriotism and a desire to serve. But we know a minority. Criminology states about 15% get in because they legally want to kill people in a psychopathic fashion, simply to kill people. Police forces are the exact same thing. And once you get psychopaths in them, they begin recruiting others and you get a culture of psychopaths. Now, these police are either psychopaths or, this is more common, they are so scared and taught instinctive shooting that it's all about a cult of their safety, so they will shoot first and ask questions later. You see them attacking homeless people, shooting autistic children, attacking old people, folks in wheelchairs. Just a crazed attitude of, you will do what I say, you will respect my authority. You see the dog gnawing on this guy. You see the police dog biting on him after he's been shot repeatedly. You see them stepping on him and then handcuffing him after he's clearly been killed. And finally, you see the police chief defending it saying they did a great job. Actually, if you watch the videotape, all the less than lethal devices were in fact deployed. The public knows, and everyone can watch the footage, that this is the extermination of a man who's homeless, camping behind a rock. More and more Americans are going homeless, more and more people are going bankrupt, and it is frightening to see this man and others, like in the case of Kelly Thomas, being tortured to death by police for the crime of sleeping outside at night. Help us! He's on something. Here, I got this. Even the most ignorant of us, even the most ignorant of the American people know that we're becoming an authoritarian police state, that the checks and balances are being removed. We all know North Korea is a horrible authoritarian dictatorship based on a police state. We know Mexico is. We know Nigeria is. We know Saudi Arabia is. But our government won't even criticize those regimes anymore, like Saudi Arabia, because tyranny is now the policy worldwide. Europe's converting to tyranny. England's converting to it. We're converting to it. It's happening all over the world. And it is the most dangerous threat to humanity. Governments killed 262 million people in the 20th century. The number one cause of death is government. Our founders said that it is the number one danger. George Washington said government 
is like fire, a dangerous servant, a fearful master. It's time to rediscover that common sense and to get the police and the government and the system and the bureaucrats back under control. The only reason the police are being given this much power and allowed to get away with what I believe is clearly cold-blooded execution is because the power structure wants to have this paramilitary force in place to oppress the people. And that's on record. The drones, the NSA, the taser drones, the citizen spies, the TSA spying on you before you even fly. This is not what a free society is about. Liberty brings prosperity. Tyranny is going to bring bondage and poverty. It's not too late to start valuing human life again. It's not too late to say no to the New World Order. It's not too late to rediscover the Renaissance, the Magna Carta, the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, and Western civilization. I'm Alex Jones, signing off for InfoWars.com, PrisonPlanet.com, and InfoWars Nightly News. Back to David Knight. Shooting a defenseless man who doesn't threaten you at all, who's unarmed, who's running away, shooting them in the back, that's murder whether you're wearing a uniform or not. But because these guys are wearing uniforms, because they belong to a police union, they're getting away with this. The police chief said they did nothing wrong. How is that monopoly of force working out for Mexico? Do you really want to give a monopoly of force and take away guns from Americans and let only the police have it after seeing that clip? Look at what's happening in Mexico. Of course, you can't legally own a gun in Mexico. Does that stop the criminals there? Does that stop the police there? We've got the Knights Templar drug cartel is now making recruits eat children's hearts in an initiation rite. We reported last week about pedophile rings in the UK, in the UN, in the US, Democrats, Republicans, pervasive with leaders covered up by the media, covered up by criminal investigators in Scotland Yard and elsewhere. And now they're not just doing pedophile rings, they're doing using children for organ rings. Officials investigating an organ trafficking ring allegedly run by the Knights Templar cartel said there's evidence that the late gang boss there demanded that recruits prove their loyalty through an act of cannibalism. Now, how are they stopping this? Is it the federales? Is it the local police? No, it's the vigilantes who have armed themselves illegally under Mexico law. They've armed themselves to protect themselves and their communities. Listen to this. This week, the leader of an armed vigilante group fighting the Knights Templar claimed his men rescued several children who were being taken in a refrigerated van to a Pacific port after they were kidnapped from a local school. See, that's the way it's going to happen. Ultimately, you are not going to be protected by the police. You are going to be protected by the armed citizenry, the militia. They protect us against insurrection, against rebellion, against invasion, and against these drug wars that have been created by our governments, by the Mexican government, especially by the American government. And look at how out of control the Knights Templar are. Now this is going back to May of last year. And they're talking about how the entire Mexican province was set afire by this drug cartel that takes its name from an ancient monastic order. You've heard of the Knights Templar. They've set fire to lumber yards, to packing plants, to passenger buses, and a reign of terror. Some communities are fighting back, taking up arms. That's the only thing that is saving them at this moment. The only thing standing between these drug cartels and the people are these vigilante groups. They're even going after lime pickers. Here's a guy who chose to try to get help from the law. And so he goes to try with a, with a convoy. These guys attacked him. Twice they attacked the convoy. The second time they killed everyone in the convoy. You've got another guy who had a sawmill that was burned to the ground because he wouldn't pay the protection money. You've got a rancher who won't give his name because of fear of reprisal. They are demanding protection money for each head of cattle that he has that is equal to any profit that he would make from selling it. And we see yet again why the Second Amendment is so fundamental to the safety and the liberty of the American people. Now coming up right after the break, we have a breaking exclusive report that shows yet again how the government is setting itself against gun owners, against people who want to protect themselves legally. Stay tuned. My friends, we have done it. With Dr. Group's help, we have developed the ultimate male vitality supplement with eight concentrated super herbs. 
This is the answer to the globalist war on male vitality with the estrogen mimickers they've added to the food and the water supply. And now our test pilot, our Chuck Yeager, Dr. Edward Group, is here to test his greatest invention. Doctor? Thank you, Alex. I will now take two droppers to test this ultimate male vitality formula. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a momentous moment. Thank you, Dr. Group. I will activate my muscles by doing push-ups. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. This is the move. This is unprecedented. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to see what happens right now. Oh, my God! What the hell? Wait, 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 wait. Get out of here. Shut this down. This is not safe. This is not Hold on. Settle down. Get, get another doctor. Something's wrong. Something's wrong with him. Help him. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we did not intend for that to happen. I take it personally. Do not have those problems. Um, uh, again, these are, these are authorized herbs. Well known to be safe. Uh, and and uh, please, uh, doctor, doctor, wait a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to cut, cut to commercial for just a moment. Cut, cut, cut. Get everybody out of here. Super male vitality. It's awesome. Just not this awesome. Oh my God, what the hell? Ladies and gentlemen, the dramatization you've just seen is just that. It is satire to illustrate in a satirical way the incredible power of super male vitality. It will not turn you into Conan the Barbarian, but it will help block some of the estrogen mimickers and reportedly let your glands produce the natural hormones your body needs. It also does have some other side effects in the human testing that we discovered, ladies and gentlemen. I'm about to illustrate right now what that is. Let's see if I can do it again. It, it takes some focus. Up, up, and away! Start your journey to super male vitality today at InfoWarsLife.com. Now, how many times does the federal government have to declare who they perceive to be the enemy before the American people start to believe them? In an exclusive breaking report today from Paul Joseph Watson, we see that Homeland Security exercises are targeting, quote, free Americans against socialist tyranny. A leaked Homeland Security document obtained by InfoWars revealed details of a joint DHS-FEMA national exercise set to take place this week one of the components of which revolves around an effort to counter online dissent by a group that's called, quote, Free Americans Against Socialist Tyranny. That's the name they give their opposition, which is a disgruntled group that's uh, about the imposition of martial law after an earthquake in Alaska. Now, this is a document that was leaked by an individual that's associated with Stuart Rhodes's Oath Keepers organization. It was marked as exclusive, intended for U.S. Department of Homeland Security trusted agents only, disseminated on a need-to-know basis. We see yet again they are identifying people who are want to be free, want to have a limited government, people who are opposed to socialist tyranny. Does that mean then that the government sees itself as a socialist tyranny? This is just amazing that, that they would name the group that. And we've seen this happen over and over again. We've seen this going back to 2009. We had an article in 2011 pointing out the many different ways that the government was accelerating the war against gun owners, against people who are conservative, libertarian, small government types, as well as Christians and veterans. We see this accelerating in 2009. Now, of course, in 2008, we had the election of Obama, who said he needed to have a domestic police force that was going to be more powerful than the army. We also had the massive ripoff of the American public with the TARP bailout for the banksters who were too big to fail. A lot of people were very angry about that. They really started stepping up their efforts in 2009. And as I pointed out in this article back in 2011 at InfoWars, we had in the Fed protests that were being monitored by the U.S. Army. We also had Janet Napolitano standing by a statement she made in April of 2009 saying that they think that vets were likely domestic terrorists. And then just a month later, the New York Times reported about how Boy Scout explorers are being trained by the Department of Homeland Security to, quote, kill disgruntled Iraqi war vets in terrorist drills. But there's a little bit of a different twist to this one this time. This time, they're, not, they're still looking at the same people, but notice how in this scenario, they're focusing on social media 
and trying to see that as the root cause of this. They say the any government organizations are vocal on social media. And this organization, Free Americans Against Social Tyranny, is using the social media to put out anti-U.S. rhetoric, focusing on the Department of Defense as well as to recruit like-minded individuals to join their cause. And again, they state that they think that the greatest threat is current government employees. So now they've moved from veterans to current employees who might read the truth in the alternative media and understand where this is all leading, what their government is up to. Now, we see this reflected this weekend in what happened to Mark Dice's channel. He had a YouTube channel with 55 million views, over a quarter of a million subscribers, taken down without warning, without any way to, to interact with them, without any due process. Of course, they just take it down. Now, this came out just a few days after Google announced that it was creating super flaggers who were going to be able to flag multiple videos, even YouTube sites and have them taken down. And of course, it was announced in the UK press that one of these super flaggers was the UK government. Do you think maybe the US government is involved in that as well? Now, they still have the ultimate say so. And what happened was there was a massive pushback on Infowars, on social media with Mark Dice's followers, and they recanted. They pushed that back. There is still hope that with enough of us standing up and saying something, we can still have a say-so at this point, but we need to do that. That is the point at which they are focusing their efforts, as we see from this scenario from Homeland Security and FEMA. And we also see that with CISPA, SOPA, ACTA, PIPA, and the Trans-Pacific Partnership, they want to use these same types of censorship tactics on websites, not just YouTube accounts. It's something that's very dangerous where there is no due process, there's no presumption of innocence, there's no communication that there's anything wrong. They just make you go dark. Now we see that in France there's also been success as people there have pushed back. In an article today on Infowars from Christina Sarich, Viva la France, country bans Monsanto GMO corn before the sowing season. Now, France's agricultural ministry, that's the equivalent to the USDA here in America, banned the sale, use, and cultivation of Monsanto's MON810 GMO corn. This is currently the only genetically modified crop authorized by the European Union, and it was seen as a slap in the face to the chief of science, Anne Glover, who stated on record that GMO has no adverse effect on human health. And they did this just before the spring planting season to make sure that it's not going to get out. Now we see from Wired Magazine why they would want to do something like this. We've got a voracious worm that has evolved to eat biotech corn that was engineered to kill it here in the United States. Now this corn is called BT corn. That's the name of the pesticidal toxin producing gene that it contains. Understand that this is a systemic pesticide. They thought it'd be a great idea to put the pesticide inside of the corn instead of on the outside of the corn. If it was on the outside of the corn, there's at least a chance that you could wash it off. If it's inside the corn, you can't get rid of it. If you eat it, you're gonna be consuming all of the pesticide. And that pesticide since 1996 has been put in the corn. It is now three quarters of US corn contains this systemic pesticide that was set up to kill root worms and corn borers. But guess what? The root worms and the corn borers have adapted. They say they've evolved. What they've done is they've selectively created other ones that are immune to this type of pesticide. They warned about this and said to keep that from happening, to keep this kind of natural selection from happening out of the DNA, that they needed to keep half of their corn non-GMO so that they would not produce these resistant strains. It even came out in 2002. That was a recommendation from the EPA. But of course, Monsanto and other seed producing big agri companies pushed back against that. And even the EPA backtracked on that. That is the power of big agri in America. That's why it's not happening here, unlike France. We need to stand up for our rights. We need to make sure that they can't poison our food, and we need to make sure that the police are held accountable when they execute people. Those things are not happening in America. People need to wake up. 
And if you will help us here at InfoWars, you can get a subscription to Prison Planet TV that you can share with up to 10 other people. You can look at the documentaries that Alex Jones has produced. It's a great way to wake up people. It helps to support our operation here. It's something that is a great way to spread the news, and we need to wake up people. It's not happening here in America like it is in France. They're still putting the pesticide in the corn. Now they're going to put it on the outside of the corn as well. Well, that's it for tonight's news. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee. And it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.